Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the First Unitarian Universal Society of San Francisco. If you are a visitor, can you just, and here for the first time or the second time, can you just raise your hand? Okay, so just know today is an experiment. I mean, every Sunday can be unusual and different in its own way, but this is particularly different. So for all of our people, be ready this morning for some creative chaos. For our visitors, be prepared and know that there isn't always as much chaos, creative or otherwise, in a given service, and we're really thrilled to have you here. Um, this service is a service that was done. It was created in one of the New Jersey churches, and the church I served did it every year, and folks looked forward to it. So I've been lobbying for a chance to do it here, and with the incredible support of Allison Jacks and Mark Sumner, we are, do this is the first experimental, maybe the last annual, but um, <laughs> anyway, so welcome, welcome to our live stream, folks. Uh, you will be brought along to the extent you can because there will be a lot of movement in today's service. I wanted to um, offer one particular welcome today to Laura Ludwig. Laura, if you would stand up. Laura is our new Director of Operations and we are super thrilled to have her with us. So she will be heading up our administration, finance, HR. She served at the Latino Community Foundation for years, at the Presidio Graduate School. Everybody loved her. We love her already. And if you have questions about things that fit under her sort of general umbrella of responsibilities, that is the person you look for. Um, so it's great to have you on board. <laughs> So this service is one that ties into the more ancient, earth-centered, pagan rites that developed around this time of year that have been incorporated, of course, in uh, you know, Christian rituals and beyond. If you actually want to come and participate in a winter solstice service, I would invite you on Saturday, upcoming Saturday at 7 p.m., to come and join our pagan interest circle. There'll be a potluck, and there'll be part of an opportunity to participate in a um, in a solstice service. I think most of us know that humankind, particularly in the northern hemisphere, during these dark, long winter nights, evolved rituals that would mark their hopes and their fears around this time when life seemed to vanish and we felt particularly at the mercy of the, of the earth and its cycles. And so this Hanging of the Greens service ties a bit into that. I want to let you all know before we launch into today's experiment to look at your order of service and your announcements. We will gather outside on the steps after service for our weekly witness to um, release the children from camps and reunite them with their families this, that we have been doing since July. I wanted also for people to notice that there is an invitation to participate this Thursday night the 19th, for the annual vigil at UN Plaza in honor of our homeless neighbors who have passed away on the streets. This year, that number was 300. And an organization has prepared placards with the name of each and every person who's passed away. We will gather those who can join us at Faithful Fools, I think the address is in your order of service, to do some singing in preparation to get a placard so that all of those 300 people are honored by a different person bearing witness to their life and to their death. So we would invite you to join in that ritual, our owning and honoring of our somewhat failed responsibility, somewhat being, to say it lightly, for our neighbors here in the city of San Francisco. And finally, next week's service will be a normal service, as normal as they get, at 11 o'clock. And then we'll have Christmas Eve at 4.45. There won't be a pageant, but there's going to be story, there's going to be song, there's going to be candlelight. The doors will open a little bit before 4.45, so please come. So, welcome again. I'd invite you to join me in saying the words of our chalice lighting. They're printed in your order of service. We light this candle for the light of truth, the warmth of love, and the fire of commitment. We light this symbol of our faith as we gather together.
John Ruskin wrote that there is religion everywhere, written in the very things of nature. This religion has no creeds. He wrote, it's written on the arched sky. It looks out from every star. It's on the sailing cloud and in the invisible wind. It's among the hills and valleys of the earth where the shrubless mountaintops pierce the thin atmosphere of eternal winter or where the mighty forest fluctuates before the strong wind with its dark waves of green foliage. It is spread out like a legible language upon the broad face of an unsleeping ocean. It is the poetry of nature. It is that which uplifts the spirit within us and which opens to our imagination a world of spiritual beauty and holiness. In honor of that beauty and the religion written on the broad face of oceans and forest winds, we sing our opening hymn this morning. Please rise as you are able and sing hymn number 21. The words are in your order of service. So, Alison, what about this idea that uh, religion is written into nature? What, for instance, might be written into the evergreen and the holly leaf and the berry that makes people want to bring those things into their homes every year around this time? Was it just that they smelled good? They do, and they look beautiful. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. People read something into them. For one, hard as it is to imagine for us here in California, this part where so much stays alive and green all year round, the winter season, which is what we in the northern hemisphere find ourselves in right now, was colder and darker and less welcoming of life. It's true here too. Right, well, I moved from Los Angeles to New York City when I was eight. And in New York, this time of year, particularly, nothing of nature had a chance. I remember in some of you who grew up in colder climates how your face would freeze. 
Leaves were completely gone from all of the trees. There would just be the stark beauty of branches, that architecture that you couldn't see during the rest of the year. Well, ex except for those particular trees and shrubs that had developed in cold places, some of them, like the evergreens, which literally means any plant that retains its leaves, its needles, throughout the winter. Well, since the Egyptians, humans have brought date palm leaves into their homes after solstice to remind themselves of that which stays green when all else fades away for winter. The fir and the pine tree in Europe and North America came to stand as symbols that spring would come. In ancient times, the holly was supposed to be such a symbol. While other plants wilted in winter weather, holly remained green and strong its berries brightly colored red in the harshest of conditions. And it was thought to have magical powers. Hanging the plant in homes was believed to bring good luck and protection. So this is why we bring, right, firs and pine branches and holly into our homes, some of us, this year, in a ritual that is far older than Christmas, and why we adorn them with colorful decorations, this visual reminder of spring, the spring that we trust is going to come, when spring and summer will allow life to blossom again. You might say these decorations remind us to have faith in life, the life that is not always visible this time of year, to have faith in the turning of the earth. So today we celebrate the evergreen of pine and fir and holly and ivy in a week when light balances against dark and winter tips towards spring. Today we pay homage to the religion written in nature's way and all it calls us to remember and hold faith with. The microphone hiding like the uh, leaves. Uh, uh, so given the theme of this service, it seemed fitting that our offering this morning would be given to support the Nature Conservancy of California, which our members who work in for environmental protection believe is doing some of the best work right now to preserve our state's natural places. So all gifts not marked pledge will go towards that effort. We invite one another to the generosity that speaks of our love of the planet and our shared commitment to its preservation and care. The offering now will be both given and gratefully received.
I am now the traffic controller. <laughs> so today is a different service. You are going to be moving around. And now I'm going to explain to you how you're going to move. And I'm going to ask you to be in the spirit of adventure, the spirit of joy, the spirit of, isn't it great we're doing something really different today? <laughs> so let me see that spirit. Oh! We're going to have a blast. OK, so this is the explanation. It's now time for us to make our move. Half of you, those sitting on the Geary side, my left-hand side, your right, are going to prepare to go down to the Thomas Star King room to make greens and enjoy some glitter and have some cider. Everyone sitting on my right side is going to remain here in the sanctuary, where you'll be led in song, learning a special holiday song by Mark Sumner, our choir director, and members of the choir. So stay put. Stay put. OK. Once we've made this move, you will each be in your spaces for about 20 minutes, greening and glitter, learning a song. Then you'll get a five-minute warning bell, and we'll switch sides. Those that were in TSK are going to come back into the sanctuary and sit in your spots. Those of you who have been learning the song are going to follow the leaders out of the sanctuary and down to TSK to partake in greening and glitter. Does that all make sense? Yes, I hear a resounding yes, Allison. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So here's how it's going to work. We have Erica, Simi, and Courtney, and Sam. They have these green ones. And in a minute, don't jump up yet, they're going to have two on this side and two on that side, and they're going to start walking down the aisles. And all of you on the, what side are you on? That's right. You're going to follow them out. And so just for the sake of order, try and go with them so we're not just creating a big kind of uh, you know, roadblock down there. So you're going to follow out. If you have um, you know, it, it, concerns about you know, your time, you take your time, basically, to say take your time. There's not a rush here. So if you need a little more time to get up and move, and if you really just feel like it's not what you want to do and you just would prefer to stay, we won't force you to go. But we hope you'll go. So then you're going, you're going to go down for about 20 minutes, and then there's going to be the five-minute warning bell, which between Vanessa and I, we will coordinate that so you don't have to worry about anything. We have volunteers and the lead teachers down in the TSK room who are there to support you and have fun, and you've got the choir and Mark here to help make sure you are learning your song and having a great time. Everybody good? All right, so I'm going to have my leaders, Simi, Erica, uh, Courtney, and Sam. Uh, just set it for 20? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And then, so let me just say the last thing on the, to hold on. So this was one little piece I forgot. So when the times switch, those of you who are in TSK will follow most of these guys with the green back. Then when it comes time for you all to leave, uh, Sam will be back, Daniel Jackaway and Richard Davis Lowell, who've got the gold ones. You're going to follow them out, and then you guys, and then you're going to see each other in the hallway. And you're going to high five. And you're going to high five and say hello, but don't, don't dally. No dallying. Just keep going. Okay? Okay. So, Geary side, follow your leaders. Oh, and choir members, you're staying in the room if you're on that side. <laughs> You'll know them when they get back. They'll have glitter all over them. <laughs> okay, we'll get a head start, it looks like. Uh, that's good. Yes, the song we're going to learn today is actually on the second page of your order of service. You'll see it at the top under the word reading. 
And it says unison song, but I've got the choir poised to sing some harmonies. So hopefully that won't upset you. Today, we're just simply going to ask you to sing this wonderful melody over and over and over with different words. Some of these words have been composed by people amongst you. Um, so, and because these, the text, <coughs> even though it evolved uh, about 200 years ago, um, the actual root, as we are discovering in many things, goes back to these strong traditional emblems of woman and man. Um, ivy, woman, and holly, man. And then they've, of course, evolved into other symbolism, as you might suspect. So, um, but today, we're going to, uh, first, there's three parts to what we're going to do. We're going to warm up. The choir warmed up at 9.30 this morning. So they're going to warm up again. We can always use more warm up. But we're going to ask you to warm up with us this time. So, and the second part will be positioning you into some sections. And that means putting a label on you for 20 minutes. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind that. And you can be thinking about what that might be, and I'll guide you through that in a moment. And then the last part of our time together before we go into the other room is to actually learn the melody so that we can sing it with the choir and have some fun with that. So uh, first off, let's warm up. And I think the best thing to do is your voice reflects your body and your mindset. So if you can just stand and just give yourself some space and a nice breath of air through the nose, whatever's best to filter that air, to warm the air, to moisten that air, and move your shoulders around just to get some tension out of the, uh, the area around your singing, uh, the voice box and all of that. So let's do a little sigh, just a nice sigh. <sighs> all right. This time we're going to sigh vocally and go as high as we can and as low as we can. Ready? There you go. <laughs> this is something I do with the choir. I don't know if you can do it or not, but we do it with flutter lipping. So it's like, like you're cold. We're going to do it, start in the middle, go all the way up and all the way down. Ready? There you go. It's hard to do if you're not used to doing it, but it's great. All right. Um, now let's try some actual musical things, like uh, C major. Yeah, we'll do uh, something that gets things really noisy and out into the space. This lovely space we get to sing in every every week. Um, nine and nine and nine. Uh, C major. Yeah. Nine and nine and nine and nine and I. Nine and nine and nine and nine and I. Nine and nine and nine and nine. track of how you felt at different parts of this because we're going to basically divide you into low and high. Some of you know the answer already <laughs> for yourselves. Um, let's try something I like to do, the yahaha, uh, start back on C major. And this goes yahaha, -ha, five notes, ready and go. Yahaha, -ha, yahaha. -ha. That's soprano land up there. Um, and tenors, too. So what we're going to do now is divide you into some groups. There's five groups. We have sopranos or trebles. Trebles would be um, youth um, willing to sing and uh, 
sing up there. Uh, we'll have sopranos. We'll also have mezzos or altos over here. And we have some tenors, the healthy men singing the higher notes over here. And the not so, well, anyway, the basses over here on this side. Those of you that just got up within the last hour and a half or so, perhaps, over on this side. So we'll use, we'll use, and the fifth category would be people who don't want to separate from, say, loved ones and want to be together and can't identify with any of this. <laughs> or we're told years ago that you shouldn't be doing anything in the way of singing. Um, you can sit here in the middle and just kind of enjoy the effects of all of this. So, uh, and what I would suggest is I'm going to ask you to sit actually in pews in a different spot. So, basses and low voices will sit in these what we call pewlets over here, <laughs> these smaller pewlets in front of the basses. Sopranos, uh, well, first off, we'll ask the parents with youth that want to maybe just be together, just come down to the front and sit in the front, right here in the middle. And then sopranos, if you can come and sit in these pews, and altos, if you can sit over here in these pews down front, lower female voices. Tenors, do we have any tenors today? Healthy, higher voiced males or really low women <laughs> can sit in the pewlets on this side over here on the Geary side of the room. So just self-identify, come on down to the front, come on down to the front, we have cheerleaders behind me to help you. Group two will join you later today. There's no competition, but we are going to have group one versus group two a little bit. All right, I see tenors, yay, fabulous. The, the success of this is always based on how many tenors you have. Fabulous. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do next is look at your order of service and check out these words. Check out these words. The song is pretty sprightly and fast moving. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to practice wrapping our brains and mouths around these words in the tempo and the speed of the song. So, uh, and I think we'll go ahead and sing the song as well, because the melody keeps repeating over and over and over. The chorus is the same as the verse, unlike most music. So you'll find the melody. Now the melody is, <clears throat> I'm glad we warmed up, because you'll find the melody hops around quite a lot, like something uh, very energetic and, and, and fun. So you will find the melody a bit challenging. So in the middle of this song today, we're actually going to lower the key so the altos and basses can enjoy the melody in a lower place, and you'll hear that. But first, let's just practice it uh, in the lower octave. And I'm going to ask the choir to sing just the melody, all right, this first time. And what we're going to do is we're going to get used to these words. So let's try it. Here we go. Uh, Bill, give us a key. But um, it's a famous tune. You might remember, um, let's see, who? Mannheim Steamroller, Natalie Cole. Um, I'm trying to remember who's recorded this. Petula Clark in the old, old days. But anyway, there's been recordings of this tune over the years. Um, so this is the tune. This is how it goes. And we're just going to keep singing it over and over so you'll have the tune in your ear certainly by the third or fourth verse. So here we go, just to get used to these words. Not too fast to start. One, two, three, go. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, on all the trees that are in the wood, the holly wears the crown. The holly bears a blossom as white as lily flower, and as the sunlight grows in strength, we shall ring the New Year's hour. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the 
then there'll be a short interlude by the choir, and then we'll dive into verse three. One, go. The holly bears a berry as red as any blood. And as we pass the solstice night, may joy and springtime bud. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. Then there'll be a short interlude. We will change keys so that we can sing it in a lower key, which is what we've been doing. And we'll do uh, verse four. One, go. The holly bears a prickle as sharp as any thorn. And as we deck our homes in green, cold and winter steam we scorn. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. <clears throat> then we have our last interlude, which takes us up to the key we started in, and let's go ahead and do that now so you're not shocked by it later. <laughs> Here we go, sorry, basses and altos. <clears throat> One go. The holly bears a bark as bitter as any bark as we welcome music in our hearts and hope attends us all. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing And then we'll finish wrapping the bow around the gift uh, with the choir ending with a sweet little tale of a piece there in the coda. So that's how the music will unfold. So I think, I think we're ready to start. Now you'll see where we need you the most. Sopranos, we need you the most where it says sopranos because that's where the melody is in your part. And you'll hear these ladies behind me uh, sing louder and recognizable music. <laughs> so on um, those parts, we need you to sing out if you can. You're invited everyone to sing the melody all the way through, but we need you to sing out the most when you see your um, identifier here. Um, I will warn you, mezzos, altos, that your verse starts sooner than you might want it to. Uh, <laughs> I picked, I picked an arrangement which gave everyone a chance at the melody. And because sometimes, as altos will attest, um, it gets frustrating for them because they don't ever get the melody. But twice in this arrangement, they got the melody. Tenors, you get the melody once, so don't miss your cue. It happens in the middle. Uh, they'll be over here waving a sign, etc. cetera. Basses, you actually get the melody once too. Um, and you'll know where that is, hopefully, by hearing them over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually go through the song. Don't get confused by what the choir does. Uh, try to make use of them. Hopefully they will help you all through this too. So we're going to try it as we're going to perform it in our recital at the end of um, our time together. We're going to do this to group two as well and then put the two of you together and then we'll have a little recital after the uh, presentation of the greens. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, well, that's about how the song is three minutes, so we're doing great. So here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> I do like to go f that fast or faster because it is about running deer and merry organ and stuff like that. So we want it to feel like it's ho you know, hopeful and sprightly and not uh, frozen like winter can be. So here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Here we go. Um, chorus, give us an introduction. Oh, one, and I'll, you'll see us when we need you. All right. <laughs> one, two.
but we need to stop there. Oh, ah, wait, 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 wait. My mistake, conductor was wrong. <laughs> that, that interlude is longer than I thought it was. Yes, so we, yeah, it takes four measures to change keys and then four measures to get ready. So that's my problem. Okay, let's, tr can we do that interlude one more time? <clears throat> this is a rehearsal. Our recital is later. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's try the interlude. Do you know where we're starting? Yes. 70. 70? Measure 70. Thank you, chorus. Here we go. One, two, three. Do, do. Here we go. Sopranos. We're on verse 5. coda that we do at the end of all of this. Okay, did that make sense? Did that make sense? Great. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we will, uh, when we regather with, <laughs> when we, when we regather with group two, that's what we will do. All right. Thank you very much. And when we come back in from uh, TSK, Star King, down the hall, come to these positions or behind where you are now because group two will probably be here if you can understand that and then just sit behind group two then all right great thank you and we'll do that when we do deck the hall and re-enter later this morning thank you all very much our leaders who are our fearless gold team leaders daniel jackaway sam is dub doing double duty all right so follow daniel go anywhere he goes and uh, richard davis lowell with the santa hat looking very cute in the back. Follow them anywhere. They will never fail you. <laughs> you can sit anywhere. We're gonna, the first thing we do is just warm up, get our minds set. How many of you had to leave something you were in the middle of? Were they like creating something in the other room? And like, did you finish? Did you? Oh, Dan. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what we're going to do first. Uh, singing involves the body, and the body needs to kind of warm up, just like anything else, you know, sport, or just moving into the kitchen, <laughs> whatever. So, um, so let's uh, kind of get things going. And in order to do that, I think uh, the choir warmed up at 9:30 this morning, and the choir warmed up again 20 minutes ago with group one. So we're going to warm up a third time. This will be your first time. So if you don't mind standing and just stretching the body a little bit, opening up your shoulders, your arms, taking a deep breath through the nose, if your nose is available to you this morning. <laughs> Ah, to open up the upper lungs and all of that. Good. Let's all do a nice sigh. Ah. Ah. Right. This time start a little higher and go as low as you can. Ready? You go. Ah. Ah. One thing I like to do with the choir is enough air to get your lips to vibrate like this. Like it's cold. So try it in the middle of your voice. Go all the way up and all the way down. Ready? Go. Right, right.
right, right. Um, <clears throat> and to get to fill this room up with sound, which is easy to do, we have such we're blessed with such a wonderful acoustic in here. So let's, uh, Bill, if you can give us a C major. We're going to sing uh, something to kind of get things going, like nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Try that. And nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Up. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine. Keep your body moving. Nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Up, up, up. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. In your face. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Nine and nine and nine and nine and nine. Good. All right. Let's try now. Let's try a different exercise, uh, getting those uh, breathing muscles uh, really, really going. Let's try the ya ha ha. I do this all the time with my choir. One, two, it goes like this. Ya ha ha. Like that. And that's what we'll do, okay? So here we go, C major. And ya ha ha. Ya ha ha. Ya ha ha. We're going up. Ya ha ha. 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 One more. Ya ha ha. Yeah. Remember how that felt. <laughs> because the next thing we're going to do is put a label on you, which I know we don't like to do that, but we're going to try. Musically, we have to, because we're going to be organizing you into four parts, or five parts, or, well, how many of us there are parts. <laughs> um, so uh, in order to do that, I've got the choir separated up here, and we're going to separate you, as we did group one. Um, and we're going to have actually five groups. We will have a group called trebles or sopranos. These are the higher voices, those that didn't mind going that high just a moment ago. Um, or uh, our young people, if they want to sing today with us, I'd love for you to, to sing in what we call the soprano or treble section. And you're going to sit in these pews here, right here in front of the sign. The ladies who didn't find that to be so much fun up on the high part, if you could sit where you basically are now, only come down and sit closer to our mezzos. Um, healthy men, tenors I mean, sorry, tenors. <laughs> if you could sit over here in what we call the pulets on this side of uh, the geary side of the, the room in front of our tenors and the other men. <laughs> Those of you who woke up an hour and a half or two ago and still haven't warmed up or will never warm up, sit over there near the ramp in front of our bases. They're holding up a sign. That's my favorite section. That's where I belong. So let's go to those positions, if you don't mind. Oh, group five. Group five are parents with youth who don't want to separate or were labeled as something else years ago. Perhaps you... <laughs> People challenged vocally or don't want to put a label on their voice this morning. Just come sit here in the middle and just enjoy being in the just middle of it all. So we have five groups, sopranos, altos, tenors, basses, and everyone else. Everyone else right here near me. Okay, come on down front. Group two will come in and sit behind you at some point. Now, do you st all still have your order of service? That's going to be very, very, very important. We need as many people who read words have an order of service in their hands. 
and there's more of them at the back if you need one. Um, we didn't give you any music because the music for this song we're doing today, the verse music is the same as the chorus music, and it's very, very, very easy to learn and rather famous. There's recordings of it by um, uh, uh, Natalie Cole. There's someone else even more famous than that these days, but I, I'll remember her name in a minute. Um, so uh, this song has a lot of words in it, so we need to get used to saying these words rather quickly. So I think what we'll do is just run through the whole song singing the words that are here. And um, I'll explain everything else later. So let's just get used to the tune and these words. These words actually evolved 200 years ago from an, from an earlier set of words where holly represented the man and ivy represented woman. These were um, emblems, traditional emblems. And of course, they've taken on other symbolism over the years as well. The melody itself didn't really evolve until 100 years ago or so. So we're gonna, we, they, we put the, the melody now in these words. Now, some of these words were written by people amongst you. Uh, these are not original words at all, so we've created them, or, or, and there's five verses here, so we've created like several, several unique lines here. So let's get used to them. Here we go. Bill in a low key. Let's start with a low key. This will make the altos and basses happy. Um, and uh, I think we're ready. Uh, we'll sing. Now, the choir behind me will be doing some harmonies later, so don't let them upset you. But they will help you as we do these different parts, and you'll see what I mean by that later. So let's get through the song. Here we go. Right here on page two under green, 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 the reading that we'll have later. Here we go. One, two, three, four, go. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly wears the crown. The holly bears a blossom as white as lily flower. And as the sunlight grows in strength, we shall ring the new year's hour. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer. The playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. Then there'll be a short interlude, about four measures long, and then we dive right into verse three. One, go. The holly bears a berry as red as any blood. And as we pass the solstice night, may joy and spring time bud. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry org, sweet singing in the choir. Then we're going to have a little interlude and change the key so that it's low enough for the basses and altos to enjoy singing, which is actually the key we're in right now. So hopefully you've been happy there. Um, and we're gonna now sing verse four and that chorus. Here we go, one, go. The holly bears a prickle as sharp as any thorn. And as we deck our homes in green, cold winter sea we Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry organ, sweet singing in the choir. Then we have a longer interlude where we actually have to go back up to the higher key so sopranos and tenors can sing where they thrive. And uh, we're going to now sing it in that key. So sorry, basses, altos, you had your moment. We're going to now sing it in the higher key. Bill, what key is that? There we go. And that's how the piece starts. So here we go. We get to that key. And here's verse 5 in the chorus. One, go. The holly bears a bark as bitter as any.
Amen. Sweet singing in the choir. And it's hard to keep a song going with so many people wanting to pull it slower and slower. So let's try to keep it moving or the service will never end. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to sing it all the way through with the choir doing what it's going to do, um, the interludes in the right key. And here's where I need all of you to help us. You will see in your order of service that sopranos, there's several times where we need you to sing out because you have the melody then and only then. And, um, and that's where you'll see a sign go up and the soprano singing, singing even bigger. Um, altos you'll have twice, it's, all, it's called mezzi, twice where you need to sing out. And the first time you sing out is rather bizarre. It comes in earlier than you will want it to. Uh, it's part of this arrangement. I picked this arrangement by Matthew Culleton because it gave everybody a chance to sing the melody which you n rarely get in a piece of music when a choir is singing. Uh, basses, tenors, and altos are rather you know, flummoxed because they have to learn all these other notes that aren't the melody at all. Um, but in this arrangement, everyone gets to sing the melody at least once. Tenors, you get once. Um, and it's actually not a verse, it's the chorus, but you'll see it and they'll wave the sign and we'll invite you to sing out there. Basses, you get once. When we go down to the low key, you'll get to sing comfortably in your low voice. Yeah. So, but now you can sing the whole song. We invite you to sing the whole song, but we want you to sing out in particular when your section is featured. All right. And then at the end, everyone really sing out because it's the last verse. The service is almost over, etc. So, um, and the choir will end the piece with a sweet little piece, a little coda, we call it. Uh, to kind of, you know, put a ribbon around the, the gift of what we've just done. So um, let's do it. Yes, what will happen is, uh, yes, when we get to this point in our recital, <laughs> which we're about to do, we're going to show everyone what greens we're about to bedeck our uh, lovely sanctuary with. Then after that, we will stand all together after the reading of Green, 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 and do a performance for ourselves and anyone who happens to walk in late to that <laughs> in the service. All right, so, so for now, let's, yeah, let's, let's do it seated if you don't mind. That way you can see us invite you at those moments and then in the performance later, we will all stand, okay? So here's how this thing goes. Altos. The rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the of the Then we 
have an interlude while we go back up to the higher key. Not yet. Two, one. Sopranos, get ready. Everyone get ready in the high voice. One, go. Everyone sing out. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer. The break of the merry that's how that will end. Okay? Great. Thank you. Oh. No, Matthew did a great job of this. Uh, yeah, altos, you, that first verse is high. I apologize. Um, verse 2, I should say, the one that, it says Metsi, but it's really kind of high. But in the arrangement, it's written for the altos, so we expect our altos to eventually get to those notes. Uh, um, it usually takes till 11 o'clock in the morning to get there, I will say. But, um, but it is pretty high. You can sing it down low if you'd rather. But we invite you to sing all of it, uh, or give it a shot anyway. Um, let's see, was there anything else confusing about that? Let's see. Oh, basses, when you do yours, there's a false cue of coming in earlier. Just wait, we'll give you a signal. Uh, that interlude is rather uh, uh, confusing, <laughs> but it's an extra bar long. But yeah, and what we'll do is we'll stand and just give it a good go and smile. It's merry music. It's um, um, yeah, and keep it moving, everybody. Uh, again, the more people you have singing, the slower it goes. And I often tell the choir, you know, keep it moving. People are checking their watches, you know, downstairs. You know, lunch is screaming at you, you know, that kind of thing. So just uh, keep it moving like you're dancing. And when you're on your feet, it'll be easier. Thank you all very, very much. Enjoy our little recital, which is about to begin. One of the rituals that evolved among people in winter climates was the hanging of the greens, done to great merriment and song. So let the merriment and singing begin. Please join in singing Deck the Halls. The words are in your order of service.
Yay, congratulations. We did it. Thank you to everybody who made, first of all, this moment possible. All of our choir members, all of our helpful greens people, decorators, people who carried them in, who had glitter now all over you for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. You may be seated. Green, green, green again, and greener still. This is our dream for winter. The evergreens have long been symbolic, uh, for hope and life in the midst of winter. Long before the birth of Christ, people in Northern Europe celebrated the winter solstice with bonfires on hilltops and evergreen boughs and even whole trees in their tribal halls. If trees could maintain their green life through the long cold nights of winter, surely the sun could turn in its course and climb the sky again and bring summer once more. The bonfires and supplications had always worked in the past, and surely they would work now. They did. They still work. This month, the sun will turn back from the abyss and climb the sky towards summer. Green, green, and green again, and greener still. Thus ends our reading. Now, let me invite Mark Sumner forward to lead us in singing The Holly and the Ivy.
for those who celebrated the solstice long ago, the universe and its workings were shrouded in mystery. For those who see their daily dependence on the natural world, on the waters, on the forests and plains and places like this, reverence for nature is always with them. A 13th century Zen Buddhist teacher once wrote that you should entreat, that is you should beg, the trees and rocks to preach the Dharma, that is the right path or way. You should ask rice fields and gardens for the truth. Learn from the hedges and walls. He tells a story of the great god Indra, who honored a wild fox as his own master and asked the fox to teach him, calling the fox the great bodhisattva or wise one. May we reawaken to reverence. Humility about our place in the universe and the order of things, remembering what existed long before us and should be helped to exist long beyond us. And about the life also that is here, even in winter times of planet or body or spirit, about what offers us protection in this world and what we owe the world in return. So happy almost solstice, everybody. May we bless our earth with our words and our deeds and our ways of living. In these long nights that speak soon of light and life returning, as it always has. Let's join, rise as you're able in body and spirit and join in our benediction. Join hands. If you are immunocompromised or sick, just cross your hands across your chest and we'll work you in the circle in another way. And now in our comings and our goings, may the light of love shine upon us. Out from within us be gracious unto us and grant us peace. For this is the day we are given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen.